Welcome everybody. This is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News. It's uh, November 21st, 2015, and um, I just want to update you guys on our geoengineering project. You're not going to believe what you're about to see. <laughs> Too stoked. Um, I was going to wait till I completed all this, but I can't wait any longer. Um, geoengineering and weather modification exposed. This is at climateviewer.com slash geoengineering. Um, I redid the page. It's a lot of more, much more information on here, but let's go ahead and get to the nuts and butts of what's going on here. Who's pushing geoengineering solar radiation management? Um, got some charts here. You click the little thing underneath it, it'll expand, tell you all about it. But National Science Foundation, European Commission, Fund for Innovative Climate and Energy Research, that's Bill Gates. Yeah, um, over here you can see uh, who's writing uh, most of the papers about it. Ken Caldera, Alan Robach, uh, Ben Kravitz, uh, and uh, everybody's friend David Keith. Um, but you can check this stuff out and get get you the lay of the land of who's who's involved, what's going on. Um, geoengineering programs; these are you know silver lining projects, Strato Shield, all of the the real world versions of geoengineering. Um, sponsors, these are weather modification corporations, universities, um, derivatives trading, and of course our patents um, article. I'm about to update the rest of that from 2003 on. Um, but let's let's get to the, the exciting, exciting stuff. Um, now here it is. Uh, you can see the weather modification conferences. I put those in there for people who aren't familiar. I suggest you check them out um, because when you come here, you're going to see uh, you know, actual, you can watch the recorded presentations on, you know, anything. Eastern Pacific ship track climatology and sea surface temperature variations. Um, observations and modeling of inadvertent and advertent weather modification. Um, this weather modification conference goes on every one to three years. Um, lots of stuff here <laughs> that you guys have got to see. I'm tired of um, people being, you know, uneducated on this topic, especially as as many people are as involved in, you know, talking about geoengineering. Quantifying cloud brightening based or on natural and inadvertent man-made experiments in marine stratocumulus. This is about ship tracks and geoengineering. Um, and of course, this one right here. <laughs> I was looking at that one earlier. Um, we're going to move along. So guys, check out the, the, the weather modification conferences. They'll give you kind of the lay of the land. Um, you can go back in time, see, you know, all the cloud seeding and stuff they're talking about. And you'll notice that geoengineering appears about halfway through. Um, but this is the, the topic du jour. <laughs> um, this weather modification experiment map, I've been working on it for three years. Um, Let's say I've been not working on it for three years. I've been trying to get this done because it's such a big project. I didn't think I'd ever get it done. Um, and then I met this guy, George Stiller from MyReadingMap.com. And uh, Google, he had made 160 maps of things like, you know, the Pacific Island, uh, Ocean patches, the, the garbage patches in the ocean. And, um, you know, I, I talked him into to helping me with this. And, you know, I put his maps up on Climate Viewer. Um, you can see them right here, myreadingmap.com. Um, and I'm going to add the rest of them. We already got 80 layers up there. But this guy went through and took the, the weather modification activities from 2004 uh, to present and put them into a Google spreadsheet for me. And I've been going through and adding references to it and making sure that it's accurate so, you, so we can finally get down to the brass tacks of who's paying for this stuff. You know, who's modifying the weather? Who, why are they doing it? What's the purpose? Um, and if you come over here, and if it loads, <laughs> there we go, you'll see that this is like project, um, Salt Lake City International Airport, fog suppression, Delta Airlines paid for that. Okay. Um, Eden Valley Irrigation Drainage District paid um, Weather Modification Incorporated to do the Wyoming Weather Modification Pilot Program. And uh, as you can see, um, there's quite a bit of information on this chart here. So what we've got is, um, you know, state, year, months, days, uh, what the project name is, why they did it, who um, modified the weather, who paid for modifying the weather, where it happened, agents, um, it says AGL, that silver iodide, and then agents CO2 or other, and then it shows the amount in pounds and grams over here. 13,000 grams <laughs> spread over 3,190 uh, 3, miles, square miles. That's a big area. Um, 
And then, you know, over here on the end, he says link. So I'm going through and I'm finding links for every single one of these so that we can really get down to the, you know, the details of it. And if you click on map right here, you can see all of the projects simultaneously. Let's zoom out just a hair. There we go. So you come over on these and you click on here and you can see that, you know, each one of these has the details on them and some of them have links. You can click the links. They will take you to the appropriate, you know, PDFs from the government. It says, you know, Colorado Water Conservation Board, weather modification permit application, public hearing for Western Weather Consultants, target area, upper Colorado River Basin. Um, so I wanted to really, the thing that, that we did not have here, each one of these dots represents a project during a year and why they were modifying the weather that year or during a certain number of months. What I want to know is how and where. So I started going um, over here. You can see it on Climate Viewer 3D. If you click this link, it'll take you over to my app, the mapping app, and we'll load that bad boy up. And what you're going to see is weather modification projects across America. Now, I'm going to go over here to layers. And you can see them right here. I've got geoengineering, solar radiation management, field pro um, experiments turned on, weather modification association projects worldwide, and UCAR earth observing laboratory um, field projects. We're going to turn that one off for now. UCAR is the number one university in the world for modifying the weather. Um, they do most of the research behind it. And uh, they're in Boulder, Colorado. Anyway, so we're going to turn that off. And then you see that the map looks pretty similar to what we had over there. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off as well. And then down here at the bottom, these ones that say NOAA weather reports, NOAA reported weather modification activities, these are the ones from the spreadsheet. Now, we're going to make these very accurate, put them where they belong. And you can see that right here, this is what it look, ends up looking like. Um, so let's get down to brass tacks. <laughs> I've been trying to find this for three years. Check this junk out. Wyoming Weather Modification Pilot Program Cloud Seeding Generators. Now, for this one dot that you see here, Wyoming Weather Modification Pilot Pro Program, there's actually this many cloud seeding generators. Okay? Now, each one of these, if you come over here next to the little um, layer, there's a folder icon. You click on it, it'll pop up and show you where did I get this information from? So you can see here that this is from the state of Wyoming.us weather mod, Wyoming weather mod project program executive summary. And then here are the photos from that PDF that I found that shows the dots on the on the ground next to the mountain. Um, if we want to make it look more like the, the picture here and see the mountains and everything, all you got to do is come down here to the bottom where it says base maps and imagery. And we'll click on Bing maps. Let's do that one. <laughs> There you go. And now we can see the mountain range. And then if I come down here to the very bottom and I click on terrain, we can actually make it 3D. Just for fun, since we're doing a little educational. And I haven't made a video in quite a while because I have been seriously busy um, putting all this stuff together. Um, and then if you want to see what these ground-based seeders look like, I even have a photo right here. Pretty cool. So let's just open that up here and I'll make it big for the, for the video. So what you got is there's several different versions of these. Some of them are remote cloud seeding generators where they're remotely controlled, um, you know, by, you know, some dude, you know, in an office and he just flips it on and off based on weather stuff that they, they look at the weather, you know, oh, we should seed today. Um, other ones are like these propane tanks where they literally just burn propane. It burns silver iodide and puts it in the sky. Um, these things, you know, there, there's so many of them. I, I knew that there was a lot. I was pretty surprised to find out exactly how many there are. I'm going to put it back on the black background just so we can uh, see this a little better. Um, and what you end up with is all of these. Let's turn them on one at a time. This is the Central Colorado Rocky Mountain Program. This is the Grand Mesa, Colorado cloud seeding program. It's right next downwind of it. The Humboldt River Basin cloud seeding project. And the Carson Walker Basin cloud seeding generators. And then the Santa Barbara, California cloud seeding generators, which oddly enough are right at Vandenberg Air Force Base, my, my home 
where I was born. Um, but yeah, all along the cloud, uh, the, the coast there. And then Idaho powers uh, cloud seeding program. And you can see with this one, they've got the ground based seeders over here. And then they've also got ground based seeders here, but these are flight paths. So these, they do flying in from the ground, um, fun stuff. So what you end up with is this, there's that many ground based seeders so far. And I'm gonna find every single one of them now that I've got my little, um, my, my spreadsheet here. So what I'm doing is I've been working through, um, you know, by project. So you can go up here, hit filter, and then you can pull this little bad boy down and see just the projects. And I've gotten to about here. <laughs> so I've still got all the rest of these to do. There's going to be many more ground based seeders popping up on the map. It's going to take a while, but I wanted to go ahead and get people involved in this. Um, Again, if you want to come check any of this material out, go to climateviewer.com slash geoengineering. Um, it's under the section, who's controlling your weather, weather modification experiment map, and the fusion table is here. When I have it completed and we have fact checked every single detail on it, I'm going to make a PDF available here as well as like an Excel, Excel spreadsheet so that you can send this to other people and get them involved um, and, and, and show them the real world you know, of weather modification and how large it actually is. Um, and then for the maps, you have a, a 3D version, which is the one I just showed you here. Um, we also have a 2D mobile map. If, it, if the 3D map does not load on your computer, try this one. It definitely will. Um, and then again on the page, this, this page is to raise awareness about geoengineering weather modification because it is a worldwide phenomena. It is growing rapidly and it is not talked about with any bit of, you know, clarity or reality. <laughs> so what I want to do is try to bring some reality to it. Um, and in an effort to do that, the last couple of weeks, I've been putting out these right here. You can see at the top right here on the sidebar, latest news, geoengineering and weather modification news for week 44, 45 and 46. If you check these things out, you're going to see that what I'm doing is gathering um, pretty much all the weather modification activities from around the world uh, for that week. And you can see like government buys Russian planes to cloud, cloud seeds, Sumatra's do, doing it. Um, we could reduce the number of hurricanes, all that stuff. Um, so, you know, diamond dust to cool the planet. I'm going to put these out each week, especially coming up to the COP21 conference. Um, we were really planning on putting on a lot of a lot of heat on them to make sure that geoengineering does not uh, get its funding, does not grow any more than it already has. Geoengineering solar radiation management will kill people, is dangerous, and should be banned. Um, in order to raise awareness about that, I'm going to continue to do these uh, weekly articles where I summarize the weather modification activities of the world, and we're going to map it out. So, so once we have this map fully uh, fleshed out, we're going to go back and see how many times somebody's actually hurt somebody with some weather modification, hopefully. Well, guys, I love you very much. Um, I hope you'll come over here and check this out. This map is at climateviewer.net. The article on geoengineering is at climateviewer.com slash geoengineering. Um, if you're on the website anywhere, you can see it's under research. We also have a heart page, nuclear propaganda, and more. Um, I love you guys. I'm going to have uh, some more videos coming out here soon. And uh, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing is going to get better. It's not. Love you, mean it.